Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is going to be a bit different to normal in that I'm not going to be out in the field looking for and photographing wildlife. Instead I just wanted to take an opportunity to run you through a couple of the images that I've got in my 2023 wildlife calendar. Now don't worry it's not going to be a video on me just sitting in my office boring you about all of it. There is going to be some footage and a little bit of a story behind four of the images um, and why I chose those images for this calendar. But before I do any of that, I just wanted to discuss one thing really, really quickly, and that's about pre-orders and pre-ordering the calendar and why I asked for pre-orders. Now, I completely understand why pre-orders seem like a bit of a pointless thing to you guys, maybe. Like, why pre-order something in September, October, November, maybe even early December? that you're not gonna be able to use until the 1st of January the following year. And, and I get it, I completely get it. And in previous years, in fact, I end up selling the largest majority of my calendars towards the tail end of December. So I understand that there's a clear pattern there and people not wanting to order these before they really need to. But from my point of view, pre-orders are so, so important because Last year, for example, I ended up selling out of calendars and not being able to fulfill people's orders towards the end of December, which is always a shame when someone wants something and you're not able to give it to them. And in other years, I've ordered too many and then I've been stuck with overstock that come the 1st of January next year, I'm not able to sell. So then I've just got a box of calendars in the loft that are good to nobody. So that's kind of the reason that I asked for pre-orders is because it helps me ascertain exactly how many I'm going to sell. Now the thing with that is there's not really any incentive for you guys to actually place a pre-order really is there? So I was thinking about how I could one, incentivize you guys to do so and two, also say thank you for your continued support. And I came up with a couple of ideas and one of them was to give away a camera bag. So one of the f-stop camera bags um, to do a giveaway. And I've decided that because not everybody that's going to order a calendar is a photographer, I've decided I'm going to leave that one until I hit 3,000 subscribers. But I've decided that instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to be giving away a voucher. And more than one in fact. I'm going to be giving away a few vouchers and they're going to be given away at random in random calendars and they're going to be for the value of one of my workshops. So that's £130 but that doesn't mean that you have to spend it on a workshop. So this can be used towards anything in terms of one of my workshops, it can go towards one of my photo tours, it can be used for online tutorials, prints, or you could even gift it away again um, to the photographer in your life and they might use it for one of those things. It could go towards buying yourself 11 of these calendars, whatever you want, but I thought it would be quite nice to do that. So rather than just giving away one voucher, I'm going to give away a couple of them at random and that's kind of gonna help hopefully incentivize you guys to place a pre-order. Okay, so that's enough on the pre-orders and all of that kind of stuff for now. I wanted to jump into the images and talk to you about how I achieved these and just share how I felt when I was capturing these images. And I'm gonna start with January, not just because it's the first of the month, but because it's probably one of the most memorable wildlife encounters I've had in the last couple of years. And it all started when I was on Mull back in July last year. After spending six consecutive days photographing this dog otter, I was starting to build up a portfolio of images that I was really, really happy with. And on this particular day, as I lay on the shoreline photographing this otter once again, it all suddenly became a lot more special, as the otter decided to have a nap right in front of me. and after quite a long wait, he woke up, dry from the sun, and decided to have a nice roll around in the seaweed. And it was in these moments that I was able to capture some images that I'm really, really happy with. And after a short while, it was all over. He wandered back off into the lock and carried on fishing.
I often think about this otter and what he's up to now. And when I look back at these images, I'm filled with nothing but fond memories. And it's that reason that I wanted this image to feature as the first image in my 2023 wildlife calendar. It's no secret that dippers are one of my favourite subjects to photograph. I've been lucky enough to photograph them in all different locations and in many different conditions. But until this day, I'd never been lucky enough to photograph them in the snow. As I arrived at the location, it was just an ordinary overcast day with nothing special on the forecast. But within minutes, the whole location was transformed as the snow started to fall fast. While snowfall can bring with it its photographic challenges, it also helps take what would normally be a very ordinary image and transform it into something else. I have hundreds, if not thousands of images of dippers, but I would say that this image captured on a cold February morning has to be one of my all time favorites. This next image is also my most recently captured image that features in the calendar. It was one of those very special mornings where everything comes together and let's face it, that seldom happens in wildlife photography. It also couldn't have come at a better time. For a few weeks leading up until this point, I was experiencing increased anxiety and this morning in Richmond Park really, really helped me to wind down and start to feel a bit calmer again. I captured a number of images that day, but since uploading the video last week to my YouTube channel, I've received quite a lot of messages from people saying this one is also their favourite. And for that reason, I decided to change what I initially had in for October and feature this one instead. So this final image is probably one of my favourite all-time images and it's not because of the quality or anything like that, it's just because it means so much to me and almost too much really to put into words. Now this image was captured very very early on in my photography career. I think I'd only been photographing as an amateur for about six months. I was up in Derbyshire visiting my grandparents and my grandma told me that she had seen quite a few hares in one of the fields down on their farm. So I set out early morning and went and sat on the edge of the field that she pointed out to me. And I could see a hare pretty way off in the distance. At the time, I didn't really have a clue about how to approach hares or what to look for. So I just sat still. I just waited to see what the hare was doing and just enjoyed the moment watching it. But I got extremely lucky and the hare decided to start bounding down the field towards me. So I lay down, fired off a few images, and the hare got up onto its back legs, and I was able to capture this one. I remember that feeling so, so well, but the feeling I remember most was the feeling of being able to run back to the farm and show my grandparents the image. And it's that feeling and seeing my grand's reaction that I hold so dear to me. And that's why photography to me is more than just the images. It's about capturing that moment in time and being able to share it with other people and the ones you care about. For those reasons, this will probably always be one of my favorite images. So there we go. That's the story of those four images. And I could probably go on all day and completely bore you about all 12 images, but um, I will just leave that and just let you look at them. And there'll be a short bit of text about where and how I achieve the shots anyway within the calendar. Now, if you'd like to pre-order one, you can do so simply by clicking the link in the description. And I'll also put a link in the top comment and I'll pin it so it stays there. And I just want to say thank you very much for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. I've been stoked with the orders I've received so far. I'm always so happy with the amount of comments and support I receive on this channel. And this is just an extra way of supporting me. I am self-employed. 
I don't make any income from anything other than my photography. So things like these calendar sales really, really do help me. But if you could consider purchasing one, it really, really does help me out. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. I've just been away filming a couple of videos, so I look forward to uploading those soon. And I'll see you all on the next video.